Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Great to have you all with me. Let's get ourselves slowly started. So I think I know everybody, but just in case, my name is Haley, and we'll begin in a few moments, just in case anybody else joins us. And uh, let's practice some yoga together for, for about an hour. Um, and I'll remind you that this is a practice, so we're not looking for perfection. Um, just give yourself permission to be as you are today. Uh, we don't have to be amazing and masterful at each and every moment. So, so give yourself as many uh, moments to to take that in and to adjust and to modify the practice so that so that you can be with the practice and allow it to just sort of unfold for yourself rest whenever you'd like so let's get ourselves slowly started welcome 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 all right so come on over to your mat if you're practicing on a mat otherwise roll out a blanket or a towel or practice on your floor and let's get started. So let's start on our backs today. So come on down to your mat in the easiest way possible. If you want to have a chair nearby you to assist you in getting up and down, have that handy or blocks or stacks of books, pillows, towels. Again, whatever's around your space, feel free to grab it to assist you in your practice. Our bodies uh, often need support in movement. So so don't think of that as a weakness. It's a strength when we can really recognize that in our bodies. So as we come down to our backs, just take a moment and let your feet come about as wide as your yoga mat. Let your knees knock in at center. So you don't really have to feel this sensation of having to hold the, the legs and let your spine settle. Once you come down, it might take a few little movements a few little moments before you can allow the spine to settle we don't have to actively press our low back into the mat here in this moment we can just allow the spine to rest comfortably so there may be depending on your the structure of your body a little arch in your low back that's okay allowing the shoulders to fall really heavy the upper back is heavy If you're comfortable, allow your hands to rest on your belly. And if not, have the hands resting beside you or wherever it feels best. And again, if you're comfortable, you can allow the eyes to softly close. Otherwise, just soften your gaze, beginning with that sensation of softening around the eyes. So the, the muscles of, around the eyes slowly start to soften to allow us to soften this uh, sensation in our body. And we'll start to slowly notice the center of our body as we settle here. And maybe you have your hands on your belly and you can feel the, the belly rising and falling with the breath. And if the hands are beside you, perhaps you can feel that lift and fall in the belly. We'll just notice here as we bring our attention to the center of the body, what is our relationship with this part of our body? You don't have to love this part of your body. I'm just allowing yourself to be present with it and notice what is, what is your relationship? Whatever it is, we can just set that aside for a few moments and just notice the function. The function of the center of our body. So 
So everything sort of emanates from this part of our body. And there's this life force in the center of our body, this breath. And we'll practice today exploring if we can really move from the center of our bodies. And letting that be a point of focus for you as you move through your yoga practice, moving from this place. And again, noticing the shoulders, noticing the upper back and the spine. Noticing the muscles around your eyes. And from there, allow your eyes to open a nice soft focus for the eyes. And just gently hug your knees in towards the center of your body. Hold on wherever it feels best and take a few little rocks from side to side. Gentle little massage. And from here, plant your left foot down with your left knee up towards the ceiling. Hold on to the back of your right thigh and just slowly start to extend and bend the leg. So feeling length and then bending it right back in nice and slowly. Take your time. You may be moving slower than me or faster than me. That's okay. We don't have to be moving in the same way each and every moment. Let's just take one more wherever you are. And then planting that right foot down, hug your left knee into your chest, hold on to the back of the leg, and slowly extend and bend. Take your time, allowing a little bit more blood flow through that knee joint. Feel your spine grounded down. Good, and wherever you are, just take one more. And we'll lower that left foot down. So knees are bent, feet are planted down on the mat. Take your hands beside you. Slowly start to tilt your pelvis and then arch your low back. So it's a subtle movement, just finding that forward and backward tilt of your pelvis there. You may not even be able to see the movement, just allowing yourself to notice how the pelvis moves in space. Good, try to keep the knees as stable as possible. One more. Good, and then we'll move slowly into a bridge. So start to tilt your hip points towards your low ribs, roll through the spine and allow your hips to lift up and then slowly lower back down right away. So inhale, lifting up, rolling through the spine. Exhale, lowering down. Continuing with this movement here, if you'd like, as you lift the hips up, reach the arms up overhead. As you lower the hips, release the hands back beside you. Continuing moving back and forth. You may be moving slower than me or faster than me again. That's okay. Now continue with this, or if you'd like, as you lower the hips and you reach the arms forward, just gently lift the shoulders up just a little and engaging through the center body. And then as you lower the arms back behind you, lifting the hips up and gently moving back and forth. So take that variation that you'd like to be in. Feel free to move from one to the other. Making sure that the breath is flowing through the body. Let's just take one more.
Good. And then slowly hug your knees into your chest. Give the knees a good little squeeze, a few little rocks from side to side. Take your feet down, arms in a nice wide T position beside you. Knock your knees over to the right, hips shift to the left. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, settling through the shoulders and the upper back. Come on back through to center. Hip shift to the right, knees brought to the left. Maybe turn your head to the right, take a nice inhale. As you exhale, allow the upper back, the shoulders to release. Good, now coming back through to center, we're gonna bring ourselves up into Navasana boat pose. So you have a choice. You can either roll to your side to come up to sit, or if you'd like, roll forward and back to come on up. And if you'd like, you can move right into your Navasana. Otherwise, we'll move into it really nice and slowly. So once you find yourself up, take your hands beside you, lift your chest, lengthen through your spine. You can keep your feet down here with your hands down and just gently think of tilting back just a wee bit. And you can alternate lifting one foot and the other if you'd like. You can keep your hands down or palms behind your thighs or reach your arms forward. Now again, you can keep those feet down or alternate lifting or lift both feet up, reaching your heart forward. Now there's a slight C curve in your spine. So yes, we have a long spine and a broad chest, but there's a slight C curve in the spine. So we're not forcing our low back into that arch. Good, holding, breathing. If you'd like, you can extend the legs for one, for two, and three. Lower down, take your feet down, hands come beside you and move through a few little windshield wipers there. Feeling your way into your hips. Come back through to center, feet are planted down, knees are bent, right hand comes behind you, left hand comes to that right knee. Slowly rotate towards the back. Come back through center. Left hand comes behind you. Right hand to your left knee. Lift up and find a slow rotation towards the back. Good. And then slowly come back to center. Shift your legs behind you or tuck your legs behind you. And come on up to your hands and your knees, finding a tabletop position. Wrists are under shoulders. Knees are under hips. And we'll move through some cats and cows here. Inhale, lift your heart, arch your back. Exhale, round your back, tuck your chin. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round, gently moving back and forth. Really connecting to the center of your body. Feeling where the movement begins. Good. One more time. Beautiful. Come back to a nice neutral spine. Root your right palm down. Lift your left arm up. Weave your left arm under your right arm and either release to your forearm or if you'd like, release to your shoulder. And you can keep that left palm pressing down or if you'd like, lift your left arm up. Release it behind you and tuck it onto your low back or wrap it around to the left thigh. Nice breath here. Good, and then as we release that, we'll use our right hand to press us back up and we'll take the other side. So anchor your left palm down, right arm lifts up towards the ceiling. Weave your right arm under your left arm, releasing either to your forearm or to your shoulder. Then you can keep your left palm down, rolling that left shoulder open or lift your left arm up and either release it to your low back or wrap around to your right thigh. Continue to open up your chest here, breathe. And nice and slowly, let's come back to center. As you come back to center, reach your arms forward, drop your chest between your shoulders, lengthening your spine with your hips up towards the ceiling in the puppy pose. Softening through your jaw. 
Good, and then we'll nice and slowly move ourselves into a downward facing dog. So you have choices. You can stay in puppy pose or you can come up to your hands and knees. Take a really active tabletop by engaging your belly or if you'd like, root your palms down, tuck your toes and lift up and back into a downward facing dog. Spreading your fingers nice and wide. Find a slight internal rotation for your armpits to broaden through the upper back and take a little bit of movement if you'd like, maybe bend into one knee and the other, pedal out through your feet, sway through your hips a little, breathe deeply. Well, now if you're in your down dog, take your feet a little bit wider, maybe as wide as your yoga mat. Take your left arm, reach it underneath you and either hold onto your waist, your thigh or your calf and gently rotate under that shoulder or armpit. Nice breath. And then release to switch sides. So anchor your left palm down, right arm comes behind you, either hold onto your waist, your thigh, your calf or your ankle, find that rotation. Come on back through to your downward facing dog. Take a moment and then we'll lower our knees down and start to settle our hips back into a brief child's pose. So knees as wide or as narrow as you'd like. Let your forehead rest on your mat or the backs of your hands or double up your fists or forearms. Pat up your knees with anything soft if you'd like or roll up a pillow or towel behind your knees if that's more supportive for you. Or come to a seated position or move through some cats and cows. Child's pose is not available or comfortable for all of our bodies, so you don't need to force it on your body. Just find a place and a moment to reflect, to notice how you feel and to breathe deeply. Good, and then nice and slowly, let's come back up. We're gonna move briefly into a downward facing dog just to bring our knees up and then we'll nice and slowly start to tiptoe or walk your feet forward to your hands. Once you're there, just bend your knees as much as you'd like, hang forward over your legs, give your head a little shake out. Having your fingertips down on something or your palms down is great. You can use a block or a chair, whatever's nearby you, a couple stacks of pillows. And let's just bend into one knee and the other, pedaling out through your feet or through your knees. And letting your head go, maybe even give your head a little shake. And now invite your feet into the movement. So as you bend your knee, just lifting one heel and then the other. So just gently pedaling out through the whole foot. Feel your toes spread, feel the experience of your feet. And good, and then planting your feet down. Take as much of a bend into your knees as you'd like. Slowly roll yourself up, allow your head to come up last. Hmm. Bring yourself up to stand at the front of your mat. And once you're there, just take a few little rolls of your shoulders. How are the shoulders feeling today? Good. And then as you allow the shoulders to settle, nice inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. Exhale, release your right arm to the right side, left arm lifts up and over. Drop your left shoulder forward, fold heavy over your legs. A few little shakes from side to side, any movements that feel good. I often just love to, as I connect body, or sorry, movement and breath, just let the swaying of my body or any gentle, subtle movements of my body be generated from the feeling of the breath moving through the body. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry, throw it out. Take a deeper bend into your knees, roll through your spine, bring yourself back up. As you come up, a few little rolls of your shoulders, checking in again, noticing you can allow the knees to softly bend there as well if you'd like. Breath and movement. And as you settle the shoulders, inhale, float the arms up, release the 
left arm to the right side, right arm reaches to the left, the side bend, and then drop that top shoulder, release into your forward fold. Any movement there that feels good, head releases. From here, we'll find a halfway lift. So palms come to the shins, reach your heart forward, lengthen your spine. You can also come up to your thigh or use a chair or a block if that's more helpful for you. And then as you exhale, slowly release back down, root your palms down and begin to step your feet back to find a plank pose. Feel free to take your plank from your hands and your feet or your hands and your knees. Or if you'd like, you can come down to your forearms and your feet or your forearms and your knees. So I'll be taking my plank from my forearms. I'm still um, modifying a little bit for my broken wrist here, but it's feeling really good. But I'm also loving the forearm plank. So any modifications that you'd like to take for whatever your body is going through, go ahead and take it. And it may be a modification that I don't even offer. That's okay, this is your practice, not mine. Good, now from there, let's lower our knees down, lower all the way down to your belly. And once you're down, reach your arms back gently, lift your chest, finding a nice locust pose. Lots of strength in the back line of the body here. If you'd like, lift your legs up off of the mat, feeling the length, breathing, see if you can Soften through the neck, the head, the jaw. And then as you lower back down, push up through your hands and your knees. Feel free to stay at hands and knees. Take downward facing dog or lower your knees. Reach your arms forward in your puppy pose. Just take a moment there. Good, now stay with this or anchor your left foot down. Reach your right leg up towards the ceiling. And then bend your right knee, bring it towards your left knee. As you do so, bend your left knee as you're up on the ball of that left foot, just a little tuck. And then extend the leg back up one more time. Knees meet as we bend the knees, just a little tuck. And then we'll plant that right foot down. And again, you can stay right here or lift that left leg up, reach, 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 reach. And then start to bring, bend that left knee, bring it towards your right knee as you bend your right knee, lifting off on the ball of that right foot. And one more time, lifting up. And then find that little tuck in, bending the knees. And then plant your left foot back down. Take a breath. Inhale, lift up onto the balls of your feet. Exhale, bend your knees. Tiptoe, walk or step your feet forward to your hands. Let your head hang heavy. Find your halfway lift. Palms come to the shins, the thighs are a prop, reaching your heart forward. Exhale, fold. Take a nice inhale. Sweep the arms up. Bring yourself up to stand. And exhale, come into Tadasana to move into Utkatasana chair pose. Bend into your knees. Hinge at the waist. No, hinge at the hips. Hands at heart center here. Shoulders on the back body, gaze is down, Lot, lots of length in the back of your neck. Actively engage your belly, so we're noticing what's happening with the spine here. We want to find lots of length, lots of space in the tailbone. Take a breath. And then as you exhale, bow forward over your legs, find your palms to your shins, thighs are a prop, halfway lift. Root your palms down, step your feet back, find your variation of a plank. Take your time to set that up for yourself. And then when you're ready, lower down to the belly, hands and knees or hands and feet. As you release yourself down, reach your arms back. Inhale, gently lift the heart forward. Stay with that, maybe lift your legs. Locust pose, actively engage your glutes. Slowly lower back down, push up through your hands and your knees. Stay at table, take puppy or take downward facing dog. And just take a nice moment there, connecting in with your breath. Give yourself that permission to rest whenever you'd like. So any resting pose at any point. It's your practice. 
From here, nice inhale, lift up onto the balls of your feet, bend your knees, tiptoe, walk, step, or hop your feet forward to your hands. Hang heavy. Find your halfway lift, arms come to the shins, the thighs are a prop. As you exhale, fold, take an inhale here, sweep the arms up, bring yourself up to stand. And exhale into Tadasana, moving into your Utkatasana, bending to your knees. Let's keep our hands at prayer for this chair pose. Now your feet may be hip width apart. You may want to take your big toes touching heels a sliver apart. You may want your stance a little bit wider, depending on the space that's available in your body, you can take it. Lengthen your tailbone, breathe. Hands at heart center, slowly rotate towards the right side. Try to keep your knees in line. So as we take that torso rotation, does that left knee try to creep, creep forward? See if you can keep it in line with your right knee. Stay right here or allow your elbow to hook to the outside of that right knee. Again, watching that that left knee doesn't creep forward. Knees stay in line. That means our hips are now in line. As you come back through the center, slowly rotate towards the left side. Stay with that or hook your elbow to the outside of that right leg. Watch that right knee. Keep it in line so our hips stay in line. Good. And then as you exhale, gently come through center, fold forward over your legs. Find your halfway lift. Palms come to the shins, the thighs are a prop. As you exhale, fold and step your right leg back behind you. Now here, let's gently lower that right knee down to the mat. Feel free to double up your mat for extra padding and have props nearby you if you'd like. So blocks, chairs, you can always have your hands up on, the, on an elevated prop. As you reach your heart forward here, we're going to move really nice and slowly. So take your time. If you tumble, that's okay. And feel free to bring those hands down at any point. If you're comfortable, reach your right arm back, your left arm back, reaching your torso nice and long. Those hands can touch down at any point. Let's see if we can keep that torso nice and long. So really strong through the center of your body. Then from here, bring your hands to heart center, slowly rotate towards the left. You may want to take your hands to your left thigh or find that same elbow hook. So hooking your right elbow, to the outside of that left thigh, hands are at heart center. Maybe turn your gaze up. Good, as you bring yourself through center, try to keep your torso nice and long, strong through the center of your body, maybe reach those arms back. Good, now we're gonna lift our torso up. You can take your hands down or hands to your thigh for support, or reach your arms forward and up, lifting your torso up, Start to slowly straighten your front leg. It doesn't need to straighten all the way, just a little. If you feel a little bit wobbly, that's okay. From here, we're gonna to start to think about lifting those left toes up off of the mat, releasing your hands either onto a prop or down towards the mat. Left toes flex up towards the ceiling. Good, the knee can be bent, it doesn't have to be straight. Now we're gonna slowly come back and move through that sequence again. So come back into your low lunge. As you do so, reach your arms back, nice long arrow through the spine. Find your twist, right elbow to the outside of that left thigh. Open up into your twist. Good, as you come through center, arms reach back. We're going to bring our torso up so arms reach forward and up and as we do so lengthen that front leg release the hands onto a prop or down towards the mat gentle tilt forward and now we'll bend into that front knee we'll tuck our back toes lift the back knee take your hands to the inside of that left leg and slowly start to rotate towards the long edge of your mat Plant your right foot down, keep your left knee bent. Your hands may be up on a prop or up on your thigh if that floor feels too far away. Stay right here, or if you'd like, turn your right toes up towards the ceiling and lower the hips to the degree that's available today. They don't have to lower all the way. If that heel is lifted, you may wanna adjust where you plant your foot or roll up a pillow or towel underneath your heel. 
Just take a moment in Skandasana. So we'll use this as a transition. We won't be here too, too long. And then we'll nice and slowly come back into that lunge. So left toes stay to the front, pivot onto the ball of your back foot. Use your hands to frame your front foot. Take a little bend in your back knee and then step your back foot forward to meet your front foot. So a moment, hang heavy, maybe give your hips a little sway. Good, and then when you're ready from there, step your left leg back behind you, lowering your left knee down to your mat. So organizing yourself as you see fit here. Again, you may wanna have props nearby you. If that floor feels far away, pat up that back knee if you'd like. We'll move slowly, don't worry if we tumble. We are not, uh, we're not looking for perfection. Reach your heart forward here. Now you can stay with your hands down or if you'd like, reach your arms back, lengthen your spine. So nice long arrow through the torso, lots of strength through the center of your body. Good, now we'll bring our hands to heart center, slowly rotate towards that front thigh. Maybe you take your hands to your thigh as you slowly rotate open, or you hook your elbow to the outside of the thigh as you slowly rotate open. Good, let's come back to that arrow. So as you come through center, keep reaching your heart forward, length through the spine, lots of engagement in your core, reaching back. Now from here, release the arms down forward and up to lift your torso up. You can use your thigh for support there or prop. As you lift your arms up, lengthen that front leg, maybe flex the toe. You may want to place your hands up on a prop or if you'd like, tilt forward with your hands down towards the mat. Don't worry if it's not graceful. If we tumble a little, that's okay. Good, let's work through that one more time. So come back into that lunge, reach your arms forward, long arrow through the spine, find your twist, hands or elbow to that thigh as you rotate open. Come back to that nice long arrow, reaching forward. Reach your arms forward, lengthen that front leg, lifting up, find length and space. Maybe stay with your hands up or hands on a prop or release the hands down. Find that hold. Now from here, bend into your front knee. We'll work through that skandasana. So hands to the inside of that right leg. Lift your back knee. Rotate open towards the long side of your mat. Keep your right knee bent, tracking over your toes. You may want to come up to the thigh or hands up on a prop. Stay here or turn your left toes up towards the ceiling and you can stay upright or lower those hips down. Feel free to pad up the uh, right ankle if it's lifted. Just take a moment here. Nice full breath. Come back through center, find your lunge, let right toes face the front, little bend in your back knee and then step your back foot forward to meet your front foot. Take a moment, shake it out. Maybe give your head a little shake. Good. Pedal out through your knees. Bending into one knee and the other. Maybe add your feet, lifting one heel and the other. Head is heavy. Plant your feet down, find your halfway lift. Palms come to the shins, the thighs are a prop. As you exhale, root your palms down, step your feet back, find your plank. Lower your knees down, all the way down to your belly. Reach your arms back, lift your chest, maybe lift your legs. Locus, opening up. Lower back down, push up through the hands and knees, take table, puppy, downward facing dog, or choose a resting pose. And take this as a moment to really let the body settle and ground, connecting with your breath. Nice, full, expansive breaths. Good, nice and slowly, inhale. Lift up onto the balls of your feet, bend your knees, tiptoe, walk or step your feet forward to your hands, hang heavy. Find your palms to your shins, lengthen your spine as you exhale, fold. Take an inhale, 
Sweep the arms up, bringing yourself to stand. And exhale, come back through to your Tadasana, into your chair pose, Utkatasana, bend into the knees. Hands come at heart center, rotate open towards the right. Stay there or hook your elbow to the outside of that right leg. Let the leg press into the elbow as the elbow presses into the leg. So there's lots of positive tension there. Come through center, rotate open towards the left. Maybe stay there or perhaps hook that elbow. Breathing. As you come back through center, gratefully bow forward over your legs. Find your palms to your shins, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, fold, step your right leg back behind you. Now here we'll land on the ball of that back foot. Feel free to lower that back knee down where we previously were if you prefer. Now this is gonna take a lot of core strength. So you can lower those hands down at any point. You don't wanna force it into your body. If you'd like, reach your arms back, find that long arrow through your spine. Breathing deeply. Slowly take your hands to your left thigh, rotate towards the left. Try to keep that length in your torso. If you'd like, hook your elbow to the outside of that left leg. Good. As you come back to your center, find that arrow again. Your hands can touch down if you'd like. Now from here, as we release our arms down, we lift our torso up, lengthen that front leg. If you need to touch down or use a prop to help you come up, you can go right ahead and do so. Lifting up, creating length and space. As we bend back into that front knee, we'll tilt forward, reach those arms back. Find your twist, rotate towards the left, maybe hook your elbow. Come through center, arms reach back, nice long arrow. Reach the arms forward and up, lengthening, engaging your core, lifting that front leg, finding length. Then we'll take our hands to our waist. From here, gently step that back foot down so it's planted down into the floor. So that foot's on a slight angle towards the outer edge of your uh, mat, but not too far, so we don't wanna we want to allow our hips to square a little bit more to the front of the mat. You can narrow your stance if you'd like. With your hands at your waist, lift up. And as you exhale, gently tilt forward. Now stopping halfway with a nice long spine. If you'd like, you can take your hands to your left thigh or reach the arms back. Find that nice arrow. Gaze is down so the neck is nice and long. Nice inhale here. And as you exhale, release. You can take a bend into your front knee if you'd like or keep it long. Walk your hands to the inside of that left leg. Turn your toes to face the long edge of your mat and just set yourself up there about the length of one of your legs between your legs with your big toes slightly pigeon toed in. Hands down, releasing nice and long through your torso. Let your head go. Arms can be dangling if they don't comfortably uh, release to the floor or prop, you can also have them dangling. Now from here, bend into the knees, lengthen, lengthen. Bend into the knees, lengthen the legs. One more time, bend into the knees, lengthen the legs. Walk your hands towards the direction of your uh, left toes. Turn your left toes to face the front. Pivot onto the ball of your back foot. From here, start to send your weight into your front foot. Little bend in that back knee. Now try to keep the bend in your front knee as you bring your back foot forward to meet your front, your back knee forward to meet your front knee. So the knees slowly connect like we did in down dog. And then as you lengthen the leg, the front leg, lengthen the back leg back. And again, bend. And lengthen, not looking for height here. We're trying to keep the leg and the hip in line. One more time. Good. And then as you bend here, plant your right foot down. Keep your knees bent. Slowly roll yourself up. Bring yourself up to stand. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Hands come to heart center. Rotate towards the right. Either hook or stay in your rotation. 
Come back through center, rotate over to the left, either hook or find that rotation. Come back through center, gratefully bow forward over your leg. Palms come to the shins, halfway lift. As you exhale, fold and step your left leg back behind you, landing on the ball of your left foot. Feel free to lower that left knee down at any point. Reaching your arms forward, feel free to use a prop so hands can be up on an elevated surface or reach your arms back, find that nice long arrow. So legs are really strong and active. Stay and take your hands to your right leg, rotate towards the right. Stay with that or hook your elbow. Find that twist. Come back into that arrow, arms reach back. As you reach the arms forward and up, we lift our torso, we lengthen that front leg. Use support if you'd like in bringing yourself up. Let's find ourselves back into that arrow, bend into your front knee, reach the arms back. Hands come to your right thigh, stay with the hands or connect your palms and hook your elbow, finding that twist. Find your arrow again, reach back. Arms reach forward and up as we lengthen that front leg. Release your hands to your waist. Step your back foot flat. So setting up for pyramid pose. Heel to heel alignment with that left toe slightly rotated uh, towards the side. Hips are squared off to the front, lift up. As you exhale, tilt forward. Stop halfway with your hands at your thighs as you lengthen your spine forward as you, if you'd like, reach your arms back. Feel that strength through the center of your body. Nice big inhale. As you exhale, release forward over that front leg. Feel free to bend your knee if you'd like. Then take your hands to the inside of that right leg. Turn your toes to face the long edge of your mat. Set yourself up so the outer edges of your feet are parallel to your mat actively pressing through the pinky toe side of the feet. Hands can be dangling or on a prop or on the floor. From here, bend the knees, lengthen the legs. Torso falls heavy. Bend the knees, lengthen the legs. One more, bend the knees, lengthen the legs. Walk your hands towards the direction of your right toes. Turn your right toes to face the front. Pivot onto the ball of the back foot. Now keep your front knee bent. Start to send your weight into your front foot. Little bend into your back knee and bring your back knee to meet your front knee. Little bend. And then as you lengthen the front leg, lengthen the back leg, pressing it back. Knee, leg and hip are in line, so we're not looking for a lifted leg or a really high leg there. And then bend again. And then press back. One more bend again. And then press back, release the left foot to meet your right foot. Keep those knees bent slowly. Take your time, roll yourself up. Once you're up, take a few little rolls of your shoulders. Softness in your breath. And nice and slowly steady your gaze. Bring our hands to heart center here. And see if we can move really fluidly, like the movement and the breath are really connected. So soften the gaze. We don't have to drill a hole into the wall with our gaze, just let it be nice and soft. Moving from the center of your body, so feel that fire and that strength. Slowly send your weight into your left foot, lighten up on your right foot. We'll bend in both knees here. Let that right foot touch down at any point. If you'd like, start to tilt your torso forward. Little bend in both knees. And as you tilt your torso forward, see if you can find that length. So lengthen both legs. And then as you inhale, slowly come back up. You can let that toe touch down if you'd like, or just gently cover. And then again, a warrior three. So as you tilt forward, keep the knees bent as that back leg extends, the front leg extends. So they sort of move um, in harmony here. And then again, bend and exhale, lengthen. One more time and bend. 
and lengthen and just stay in your warrior tree just for a moment, not looking for perfection. You can touch down at any point. And bending at both knees, slowly come back to center, anchor your right foot down and just slowly shift your weight from foot to foot, side to side, fullness in your breath. So let this really flow from the center of your body. You will move differently than I will, that's okay. So just shift your weight into your right foot, lighten up on your left foot. Let it touch down at any point. Little bend in both knees, hands at heart center. As you start to lengthen that back leg back, as you tilt your torso forward, both legs lengthen together. And in all in harmony, they sort of bend back towards center as we lift our torso back up. And again, as we tilt our torso forward, the legs open up, find length. And exhale, bend. One more time, opening up. Hold that warrior three here just for a moment. There can still be light, there can still be breath in the pose, just because we're holding it doesn't mean it has to be a statue. And then bending at both knees, come back up, plant your feet down, gently rock from side to side. Feel your spine create a little bit more length. Nice inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, release your right arm to the right side, left arm lifts up and over, drop that left shoulder, hang heavy over your legs. Pedal out through your knees, maybe invite the feet into that movement. Gentle bends, gentle sways. Plant your feet down, roll through your spine, bring yourself up as your head lifts, let the arms guide up towards the ceiling, left arm falls towards the right side, right arm lifts up and over, drop that right shoulder, release nice and heavy, and again, bending into one knee and the other, maybe pedal out through the feet a little bit there as well. Good, and then settling the feet, find a halfway lift, as you exhale, reach your palms down, step your feet back, find your plank and lower all the way down to the belly. So don't spend much time in your plank there. Just come on down to your belly. From here, let's reach our arms back. Inhale, lift your chest, maybe lift your leg. And exhale, release, let your forehead rest. Take a moment here. Just notice how you feel. Feel the center of your body. Nice full deep breaths. And we'll move one more time. Reach your arms back. Inhale, lift your chest, maybe lift your leg and stay. Again, it doesn't mean that the pose has to be a statue. There can still be life. There can still be movement, lots of breath. Soft, steady gaze. And nice and slowly, lower back down, let your head rest. Maybe give your hips a little shake from side to side. Push up through to your hands and your knees. Send your hips back into a child's pose or feel free to move through some cats and cows in a tabletop position. Just give yourself a moment to let that spine settle. The spine may be feeling pretty sticky right now. Seeing if you can breathe into your low back, any little massages you'd like to take, any sways or movements through the hips can be really useful, really beneficial. Good. And then when you're ready, let's come on up to our hands and our knees, find a tabletop position. We're going to shift ourselves into a variation of pigeon pose that I really like to take for variety. We can get into different parts of our body. 
And it can be one that we may, um, may be able to introduce into our bodies if pigeon pose is often not available. So from tabletop, tuck your, let's start on the right side, tuck your right toes back behind you and just take your right toes to the outside of the left side of your mat. So just taking that right leg all the way over to the left. Now try to keep your torso where it is so that we're a little bit more in line with that left thigh and just slowly start to shift your right leg back. As you shift your right leg back, just walk your hands a little bit more towards your torso. And you may wanna stay up with that heel lifted or if you'd like lower that back knee and release that top of your foot down. And you may wanna pad up that back knee or foot if you're on a hard floor, it can be pretty sensitive there. And you may wanna stay upright here or come down onto your forearms or let your hands rest on the prop. So my torso is coming over my left leg. In pigeon, we're usually to the center. Uh, so our, our um, torso is more squared off to the center of our hips. Here, we're all over to the left side and just notice the different sensation. If it's really not working for you, you can bend your knees here and take a 90-90 instead with both knees bent. That back leg does not need to straighten. It's just working towards that direction. Take a nice deep breath. See if you can soften through your jaw. Staying present with whatever sensations we feel. Nice, smooth breath. Oh, lovely, let's come back up through center. And then we're gonna move to the other side. So take your time, it might take a little bit of awkward wiggling to bring yourself back to table, that's okay. Come on back to your table. And I love a few little um, hip rolls. So if you want to roll through your hips or take some cats and cows, you can go right ahead. I don't know, I just love moving through the hips in a tabletop position. It feels really nice for me. So if it doesn't work for you, it can be more through the upper back or the mid back. Let's take the other side. So tuck your left toes back behind you. Take your left leg all the way to the right side. And stop here. This is enough or slowly start to shift your right leg back. You can walk your hands towards your body just to the point or the degree that feels comfortable. You can lower that back knee down, back foot down if you'd like. Stay upright or if you'd like, come forward. I'm just gonna shift myself forward just in case you can't see that. Good, now I've got my torso in line with my right thigh as best as possible, so I need to be inside fine. Just working towards that sensation as opposed to where we are in pigeon, right? When we're a little bit more to the center of our hip. Here we have a slight uh, twist. I'm just noticing the sensations we feel staying present in the body. Softness in the jaw. Oh, lovely, let's come on back up again. If it's awkward, it's awkward, that's okay, we're human. Come on up to your tabletop, any movement there you'd like to take, cats and cows or some hip rolls. Doesn't have to look graceful, doesn't have to look like yoga, just moving in your body. Good, and then nice and slowly, let's walk our hands back to our feet and let's sweep our feet in front of us. Come on down to our backs. So again, come on down with care and ease. Hug your knees into your chest, give your knees a good little squeeze and a few little rocks from side to side. Your spine gets a nice little massage here. 
skin. And then plant your left foot down, hug your right knee into your chest, give it a nice squeeze. Hold on to the back of your right thigh and just start to lengthen and bend, just like we did at the beginning of our time together today. So just noticing if it feels any different. Good, next time you find yourself in that extension with the leg really nice and long, just take a few breaths there. If you wanna point and flex your foot, go right ahead. Maybe roll through the ankle a little. Soften through your jaw, breathe. Bend your right knee, plant your right foot down, hug your left knee into your chest. Hold on to the back of that left thigh and extend and bend. Just noticing how that feels. Do the joints feel a little bit more warmed up or do we feel more sensation? Just noticing. And the next time you find yourself in that extension with the leg really nice and long, just stay there for a few moments, maybe pointing and flexing through the foot. You may feel that in the front of the shin, that's okay. Maybe rolling around through the foot a little. I like to play with the idea of trying to get each and every toe to have a little bit of their own free movement, which is really challenging. They tend to want to move all together. <laughs> Good, and then nice and slowly bend that right knee, plant your feet down, take your arms into a nice light T position beside you. Shift your hips to the left as your knees drop to the right. Feel free to keep your knees stacked or cross your top knee over your bottom knee, letting the upper back, the shoulders fall nice and heavy here. Take a nice big breath in and out. Paying close attention to the muscles around your eyes, just allow them a little bit more softening. Gently bring yourself back to center, shift to the other side, hip shift to the right knees, drop to the left, keep your knees stacked or cross your top knee over your bottom knee. Letting the shoulders and the upper back fall nice and heavy. Every time you exhale here, just seeing if we can surrender the weight of our body a little bit more. We don't have to hold, we don't have to grip. We can be, and that's enough. Slowly come back through to center. Let's prepare for our final posture, Shavasana. So if there are any socks or sweaters you'd like to put on, go right ahead. Any uh, sips of water or final movements you'd like to take, feel free. And then we'll find ourselves in the most comfortable position for your body to rest in today. So perhaps a corpse pose, legs extended, arms extended, eyes closed. For Supta Baddha Konasana, taking the soles of the feet together, knees open to the side, or take the soles of the feet to the outside of your yoga mat as you allow the knees to knock in at center like we started with, or lie on your side or your belly. Pad yourself up with any blankets or pillows that you would like to have around you to support your body. So you can release the weight of your body. Without having to work here, simply surrendering. You don't have to feel good. You don't have to feel at peace. Just allow yourself to be. If you're comfortable, allow the eyes to softly close. Relaxing your toes and your feet, your legs, 
and your hips, your belly and your chest, shoulders and arms, hands and fingers, releasing some tension in your neck, your jaw, space between your eyebrows, your forehead, and rest. And slowly begin to bring a greater awareness to your body and the space around you. And perhaps invite your breath to deepen or invite a little bit of movement back to your body. Maybe wiggle your fingers, your toes, perhaps take a great big stretch. From there, in the easiest way possible, bring yourself up to a nice, comfortable seated position. And we will end our practice together today. Finding yourself there, allow your spine to lengthen, hands can rest wherever they feel best, maybe beside you, maybe on your body, and that heart center or one hand on heart, one hand on belly, allowing your, your chin to drop, just bowing the head. No matter how the body showed up today, just taking a moment to appreciate this body. And thank yourself for taking the time to practice today. And I thank you for sharing your practice with me. Stay well. Thanks so much. Lovely to be with you as always. Happy Wednesday. Um, try to catch the chat in case there's any questions or sharings. Otherwise, uh, I look forward to practicing with you again, maybe next, next uh, Wednesday or Friday. Yes, see you on Friday, Selma. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves and stay well. Thanks.